Hi, Alton Gansky here, altongansky.com. Thanks for stopping by my office as we look at another Typewriter Tuesday. And today I'm going to share with you one member of a three member family made by Royal, portable, called Futura 600. I'll give you a little bit about its history and how it came to be in my family. I think you'll find an interesting story. Again, this is Alton Gansky, altongansky.com. Stay with me. It's Typewriter Tuesday. Let's journey into the past to see what writers of old used to use to ply their trade. What kind of mechanical beauty does Al have for us this week? Well, here's the typewriter I was telling you about. This is a Royal Futura 600. Note the number, a 600. There were three of these made. That is three members of this particular Royal Futura family uh, from 1958 to 1962. There was a 400, a 600, and an 800. And as you might imagine, the differences between them is that the 800 is more expensive, has a few more features, and a few more color choices than did the 600 and certainly more than the uh, 400 did. Uh, that's kind of a surprise for some people to realize that the typewriters followed the auto industry in uh, doing the add-ons. You could buy a base model car, but if you wanted a radio, if you wanted a uh, different type of interior, if you wanted wood ingrain on the dash, whatever you might want, then you started paying extra for those kinds of things. And uh, many of the typewriter companies started doing the uh, same kind of thing with their typewriters. Here's a base model, but if you also want to have uh, um, a type of paper holder, well, you can uh, pay more for that. If you want to get it in different colors, if you want a few more keys, like a number one key, uh, those kinds of things, you could just pay a little bit more for this. Let me quickly tell you how this came into uh, my typewriter family. So I was going through Facebook, uh, the marketing section, that is the marketplace section where you can find uh, people near you that are selling things. And I'd done a search for typewriters as I uh, tend to do. And I saw this typewriter there. Of course, it didn't quite look like this, um, but it was initially being sold for uh, $20. And I thought, well, you know, I'll buy a typewriter just for parts for $20. Uh, and then I noticed it had been lowered. The price had been lowered to $10. So I contacted them, asked if it was still available, and they said it was, and I could have it for free if I could get there before 9 o'clock the next morning. Turns out they were moving. And uh, a free typewriter is right in my price range. So uh, I went out, found the house, found this, and it was in a horrible case. The case is probably beyond repair. I haven't started work on it yet, but I don't have much hope for it. It was filled with mildew on the inside, um, but this was in there. I took a look at it, and it looked like it might be redeemable. So I went ahead and took it for the summary price of uh, nothing. And uh, the other good news with that, not only did I get the typewriter and the case, I got the five pounds of dirt that came with it. Brought it home, decided I was going to work on it in my garage because it was just too filthy to do on uh, inside the house, and went at it. I got it all cleaned up and it turned out to be a great little typewriter. The Futura has a, a great reputation. As I said, there are three uh, of them, three models. And you can tell which is which, if you know what you're looking for, just by looking at the front. But in the back, it says Futura 600. So this is the middle one. This is the middle child. Uh, the 800 has a couple more keys, which would be the number one with the exclamation mark, and a plus minus key, which would go over here. Uh, so that's one of the things, and it came in a whole host of uh, uh, other colors. Uh, so from 1958 to 1962, they did these. If you got the 800, uh, you could get, oh, I think it's five different uh, two-tone colors. Uh, periwinkle blue, meadow green, mist gray, and cocoa, which is really more of a salmon pink. And then they did one, and I'll put a picture up here for you of a three-tone Americana model. Uh, and it's one of these, except it's the 800 version, and you can usually tell because there's got the extra keys up here. Uh, it's the Americana version, so it's an 800 model, and it's done in red, white, and blue. And I happened to find a advertisement out of a magazine uh, being sold on eBay uh, for this particular thing. So uh, I think that's one of the best looking uh, of this model. Well, let me give you the, the basic tour of the 600 here. Uh, as you can tell, it is a portable. It's uh, pretty light, and the reason it's light is it's made with aluminum and heavily painted to protect from rust. 
Uh, it weighs in about 22 pounds, which is pretty good for a portable, uh, lighter than most, nice steel return, a lever here, and uh, one of the things I like about Royal, some of them uh, have these little buttons you push, and it pops the hood, just like in your car. Uh, it is a segmented shift. Uh, if I'm not sure what that is, let me show you. Notice the type basket, this thing in here. Uh, and when you do the shift, it lowers. Uh, on many portables, especially earlier portables, the carriage would lift when you press down on the shift key. And so what you're doing is with your little finger, you're lifting the whole carriage up somewhat to a rock mechanism so you didn't have to actually lift the whole thing. And it, you'd think that wouldn't be that big a deal. Uh, but actually, if you're on a typewriter for a very long period of time, it can. You can wear yourself out trying to lift that thing up and down, uh, especially with the earlier typewriters. So they went to this segmented shift. That's where the type basket drops. Much easier to do. And as we look, uh, you might notice this little thing here, a little chrome lever. And that's the tensioner. That adjusts the tension regulation, how difficult it is to push the key down. So if you're manly man and hit the keys really hard, you can set it to high. Um, if you like a little more delicate touch, you can set it to low. Uh, and again, it's to make it much easier on the typist to sit at a typewriter for a fairly long period of time. It also came with this wonderful uh, little thing, this corrugated face, uh, front face on this. It's a little corrugated front. There have been a couple of typewriters, I believe, uh, Olivetti made one with that same kind of thing up front. Nice little design. And this is considered a space age design. In fact, in some of uh, the advertisements, and these were heavily advertised for uh, students primarily, uh, especially since they had the lower end, uh, 400 and the 600, uh, you could get uh, students uh, to buy them, families of students to buy them for those in high school and going off to college uh, with it. But it was designed as being ahead of its time in design. It was promoted as being uh, newer than space itself. I don't know what that means, but somehow the advertising people thought that was a real selling point, that it's newer than space itself. And you can find these ads in many old magazines. Uh, they advertised heavily. Overall great typewriter, uh, 42 keys. It has everything uh, that you would want on a, a standard typewriter. It looks just like uh, just about every other typewriter. The keys are called Tombstone. Uh, if you look at them, again, from the top, they look like uh, tombstones in a cemetery. And it's called tombstone style, with the bottom being flat, the top rounded. Uh, so that's, that's kind of fun. Comes with a margin release, comes with a tab. And the tab is interesting. On the 400 and the 800, you get these. Uh, I don't believe on the uh, lower one, the, the 400, that you get them. And that is, you can set the tabs right here from the keyboard. That will becomes a fashion from really the 60s on, where you can do everything from the, just the keyboard. You didn't have to turn it around like you did on the, some of the older portables, and I have many of these older portables, and some of the old standards office style where you had to pull the back down and put uh, things in there to set the, the tabs. All done right up front. You can also set the margins. And that's what these red buttons are here. Red buttons corresponding with the Royal. Uh, and everything's magic with Royal. With the tabs, it is the magic column set. And with the, uh, the red here, it's the magic margin set. And it's very easy. You put your paper in, you decide, well, I need to be closer to the edge. Uh, and so I'm going to reset my margin. You can use that by pushing that button. You've got to set the right margin. You do the same thing over here. Or you can move them in uh, by just setting your carriage where you need it to be and pressing those buttons. Works very well, and it turned out to be a very good typer. Uh, it's got a nice paper table. What it doesn't have that the 800 has is a paper support. The 800 has uh, a support that'll come up and hold the paper up for you. This one does not. Uh, so that's one of the little differences, one of the things you didn't get on this. The truth is on most of these basics, and I'll be showing you another one here in the next episode or two that's as basic as it gets, it has everything you need. Uh, even those typewriters that don't have tabs, you can just space one, two, three, four, five. And if all you're doing is writing letters or term papers, that's going to work fine for you. Uh, if you're doing 
things where you need to tabulate, you're filling out forms, you're doing spreadsheets. Back in the day, then the tab was uh, is crucial. One, two, three for the line spacing. Very easy to reach, very easy to change. Very easy to move the carriage along. This releases the uh, support rollers behind. Uh, you can back here on the side, you see this little lever here. This releases the carriage, so you can move it back and forth. Come back around here. There's one here also. Uh, you can, as with many typewriters, it has this release, so instead of the click click, if you're here there, you push this button in. So it's a push in, and you push it in, and you don't hear the click. And so you can free roll it. So that's when you want to uh, do things like um, in forms, you have to set it on a particular line. They may not all match what you, uh, your, your settings for your line spacing, so you just roll them down uh, that way. And you can do the same thing here. By pulling this forward and it free rolls, you can push it back and it goes back to its standard clicking. So there it is, uh, the wonderful Royal Futura 600. And again, this came to me uh, by a chance find uh, through Facebook's uh, marketplace and I received it for free. Case is no good, but the typewriter turned out to be very, very nice and uh, works quite well, cleaned up, uh, though it took a little time, cleaned up very good. Let's do just a little typing test here. By the way, the typeface came both in Pica and Elite, Pica 10 characters per inch, um, and the uh, Elite 12 uh, characters per inch. And uh, the font style is called Merit. All right, let's just take a quick listen and look uh, as we type here. Let's do our traditional testing. And uh, that is a quick brown box. Jumps over the lazy dog. This offends the dog. Chases and pounces on the floor with brown box. And the typing is nice and clean. Spacing is good. The alignment is pretty good. The alignment, which I had done a little bit earlier, is off just a little bit. And that you test by typing H, H, H. I do it a little bit differently than others. I do a small case H, capital H, and then a capital H with the shift lock on. Um, because sometimes they're a little different. Those adjustments can get off. And this one is pretty good. Do it in three places to make sure it's balanced all the way across. This one's pretty good. It's off just a hair, um, but nothing that I would worry about. Well, there it is, uh, the Royal Futura 600, this particular model, in a pearl gray and uh, a free typewriter. And it's really hard to complain about that. Thank you for joining me for Typewriter Tuesday. Uh, you get a chance to hit the like button and you feel uh, moved by the spirit to do so. Well, I greatly appreciate that. Be sure to uh, subscribe at the, the YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube subscribe to the web page so you don't miss anything uh, when I do these or some of the specials that I do. Again, this is all Hingansky with Typewriter Tuesday. Thank you for joining. Goodbye for now.